Hello and welcome to Delaney Studios YouTube channel. Today I'll be teaching you how to draw and watercolour a beautiful pink flamingo. So what we're going to need today, these are our tools, we're going to need a piece of watercolour paper, a 2B pencil, a kneadable rubber or a piece of blue tack, a normal eraser, you'll need some watercolours. So I've got a range of pinks and blues and purples and I'm going to be using some yellows today and then black for the beak and uh, details in the eye like the pupil. So make sure you've got all those handy. Make sure you've got either a tablecloth or a paper towel underneath your um, piece of paper just to keep your table nice and tidy. You'll also need just a few brushes. Um, I've got a size zero, a size two and a size four round tip but it depends on the size of your paper. So, and you need a water pot and I've got a piece of paper towel handy uh, just for any blotting. Let's get ready to start. Okay, step number one, get your 2B pencil ready, nice and sharp. And we're gonna do a little bit of planning. So I'm gonna say my flamingo's neck is going to reach no further than here. Beak's probably gonna come out to here. That's pretty much all the guidelines you really need. So it's a top line and a side line. Step two, break it down into shapes. So of course, being a bird, we're going to have a circle for the head. Just a medium size is fine. And the body is actually a really nice big curve. So we've got our shapes, basic shapes. Now we're going to try and join them together. So what I want to do is just plan out a bit of a neck. So make sure when you're doing the neckline, this is a center line that goes through the middle of the neck. Don't come right up and curve it right up. It's a really gentle curve. It comes close to the body and then touches the body. So I can get rid of that little extra line I don't need. And now what we're going to do is join all of these parts together. So starting from the top of the head, what you want to do is remember this is half the neck. So we're going to continue half of our neck and have that joining into the body. And then we start at the bottom of the head. Make sure it's nice and thick. And that one comes off the bottom of the page. So if there's any tidying that needs to be done, I could probably smooth out this area here. We can do that. A bit smoother. Make sure it's nice and even, take the time. Keep it nice and soft when you're drawing. Okay, that's your basics. So you can get your eraser, rub out your guidelines. I know I have enough room for my beak there. You can also get rid of all your lines inside your shape, including the cutoff line there to the body and the back of the head circle. Okay, so from here, we can start adding in the details in the face. So I'm gonna zoom in for you there. Okay, got a nice zoomed in shot. So what I'm going to do is just plan out where my eye is going to go. So using the curve of our circle we already have, I'm gonna come up and around. That's where my eye is gonna go. And I'm gonna extend this down, back up to the bottom of the face. So a nice curve for the forehead, little loop around for where the eye goes, and then a nice triangle shape for the bottom of the face. Now we can get rid of that original face circle. We don't need that anymore. Done its job. And we can start adding the beak. The beak is going to come in and touch the neck a little bit. So we can start at the top, bring a straight line down, and then we're going to turn it inwards until we touch the neck. And we're going to do the same on the inside, just gentle. 
like that. And you can use your eraser. and create a nice beak shape. Now we can get into the details. So we can do the eye. The eye is nice and simple. It's a circle with a pupil. And you can even do a little area for a shine if you'd like to, so three circles. Then we can start separating out the parts of the beak that we need. So parts of it is black and parts of it is like a gray pink. It's even got a little bit of yellow in there. I'm going to just separate that out. Pumps right up and then curves off. So lots of little wavy lines. There's no distinct line that separates. We don't need that. Just something nice and simple like that is fine. Okay, so that's all our drawing done. So if you do have a little bit of blue tack or kneadable rubber, you can just run that very lightly over your artwork just to get rid of some of the lines because of course watercolour is see-through. You don't really want to see your pencil lines. And if you don't have a kneadable rubber or a blue tack, that's okay, just leave it as is. So I can still see plenty of my lines there. Now I'm going to select my larger brush and I'm going to start infilling the pink areas of my flamingo. You can do it wet on dry or wet on wet. So you can either wet the whole flamingo first, just the pink areas, and then add the colour. Or you can do it wet on dry, just do it straight up. So I'm just going to do wet on dry and activate my pink. If you don't have pink watercolour, you can make it using red and white. And I'm going to use a couple different pinks that I have here on my palettes. So palettes I'm using are the Koenor Brilliant palette, which you guys will know is my favourite palette. It's the really bright one, the cream bases. So I'm keeping it all as wet as I can because I want to add more colours into it later. So I'm adding a bit of extra water. I don't want it to dry out while I'm working on everything. more water you add the better. I can pull that pink right down and not risk it drying out too much. This is a nice pink colour but it's not the finished colour that I'm looking for so I'll be adding much more into it. Tablecloths are really important. Okay, so do a basic pink there. So I'm going to wash my brush and now I'm actually going to add some yellow into my pink while it's wet, just in a few spots. I just add a little bit and then I spread it out with water on my brush create different looks using this too, which is quite cool. The paper will curl a little bit. That's very normal with watercolour, even with watercolour paper. So this is where the wet on wet comes in. I've got wet colour. Now I'm going to add some different pinks. So this one's a slightly darker cherry sort of pink. I'm thinking about where the darker areas would be. So there's going to be shadow on the back of the neck. And there's also going to be shadow under the face.
And I want the illusion of feathers, so I'm going to just flick. Washing my brush. I'll do some yellow ones as well. So yeah, that just adds a whole nother level. And you can spread any little puddles or you can pick them up with your paper towel. Nice sort of mottled look. Okay, so I'm going to go and dry this off using a hairdryer. If you don't have a hairdryer, you can just leave it for a couple of minutes and come back and just test it with your finger to make sure it's not wet. You can see all the shines on mine, so it's quite wet. So I'm going to go off and dry it and then I can move on to the beak area. Okay, so it's all nice and dry. So from here, I'm going to get into this area of the beak, the top half. So all I'm going to do with a slightly smaller brush, so this is my size two. I'm going to activate some grey. And it's wet on dry again. I'm not doing anything super special for it, just giving it an all over coat of grey. If it activates the pink around it, that's a good thing. Now, here's where it gets tricky. Use a smaller brush if you have to. Go around the eye. Try not to go through it. I'm going to attempt to keep this as wet as I can because I want to bring some other tones into it. Okay, so it's just grey. Now I want to add the tiniest bit of yellow to this under base area. And I do want it to blend a little bit with my grey, so I don't want it to be super bright. Remember, if it's too bright, just dab it with a bit of paper towel, knock it back, or a bit of tissue. A little bit of yellow, wash my brush. Now I'm going to do a little bit of pink at the top here, just to break up these shapes. Makes it a bit more interesting. We do have a nostril in there too, so I'll add that at the end. And if it's too much, stop, wash your brush with a damp, clean brush. You can come back over the top and rework it. I'm going to add a little bit more grain to it. At the top here. Don't worry if you get it in this area, that's going to be black anyway. kind of stripy look to it. Okay. So what I'm going to do is make sure that that is really dry before I come in and do my darker area down here. What I can do in the meantime I am actually going to pop in a really light pencil split just between the top and bottom beak. Super, super, super soft. If you went too hard, don't worry, just use your kneadable to lighten it up. And I am actually going to leave that really grey. So while we've got the grey active, let's bring down just a strip of grey. If you're older, you can bring some blue tones into it. I'm just going to stick with blacks today. Okay, still quite wet. So I'm going to go and dry that and I'll be back. Okay, it's nice and dry. So I'm going to use my 
number two brush again. I'm going to activate some black this time. Now I'm going to infill the rest of the areas of the beak in black, nice and slow. Slow is the key, use the very tip of the brush to really get those outlines in. Hard part is getting around that gray line. Second coat is always good with black. First coat tends to be a little bit see-through. Using the very tip of the brush and slow. If you're a little bit older, you can wash your brush, just have a bit of a damp brush and you can actually just activate this edge and soften that edge out. So that's an advanced step if you'd like it. Washing it again, just a damp, clean brush. And I'm just activating those edges. So that softens the line out and then I'm just getting it to disappear into the rest. If you're little, best not to do that step. I'm going to rework some of that grey because it looks a bit white and it's okay if it runs, the black runs. Just to darken it up a little bit. That's better. Not as noticeable. Giving it another coat. That looks good. Now, while I'm here, I'm actually going to add the color in the eye as well. So I'm going to do that with yellow. So use the very tip of the brush. If you have to use your smallest brush, do that. Just don't put it in the shine. Okay, so from here, I'm going to let that beak dry a little bit. I can do the nostril while I'm here too, and I think of it. Clean your brush. A little bit of black. And if you're advanced, they have actually dragged just water down from the nostril. It blends a little. Uh, this is an advanced step if you'd like it as well, which is adding some detail into the flamingo to make it look just that little bit more realistic. So what I'm going to do is activate some pink. And I'm going to use a really thin brush. You can use your double O or O if you've got it. And I'm just going to add some little flicks in. I might swap to a smaller brush to my zero. And you want to make sure this is watered down a fair bit because you don't want it to be too obvious.
and you don't do it everywhere. You definitely don't have to do it everywhere. little flicky flicky motions do some on the back of the neck here If you're super patient, you can definitely paint more and you can add it to the whole flamingo. Come down to the chest. It's very, very subtle. Okay, I'm just going to zoom out and we can work on the feathers. Okay, so I'm just going to use the same small brush and I'm just going to add in some extra nice feather flicks. Plenty of water on the brush is key. Just really adds something special to it, another extra layer. So I'm going to go and dry this and then we'll get started on the background. We'll leave time for that eye to dry off properly. Okay, nice and dry. So you're going to take your biggest brush that you have and what we're going to do is now a wet on wet technique. So I am going to wet my outside edges and it's totally fine if it activates any of that pink. My water is slightly pink too. You can change your water if you want to. It doesn't really bother me. I'm going to add water in that bottom corner and add water under the chin. Really careful of that black. Then this back section behind the neck. Do a little section up here. If you're not sure where you've done, just hold your paper on a little bit of an angle so you can see the areas that you have wet and they'll be shiny. Okay, so now we can activate really soft 
versions of the pink. Um, you can even add the yellow in there if you'd like to, but the key is the more water you use, the better. Because it's going to be softer. So if you're worried you've put down too much pink, you can always pull it up with a bit of paper towel or tissue. So I'm using a very watered down version of the pinks. So you get a wobbly brush motion. Very, very soft. Okay, while we're here, you can either do the eye in pen or you can do it um, with watercolour. I'm just going to do it with pen. I've got a black pen handy here. Slow, slow, slow. Makes that eye pop. Now I'm going to dry off this watercolory, wishy washy background. Might even add a little bit more red up here, pink. So I'll give that a dry and then we can do our splatter background. Okay, so my background's nice and dry. So what you want to do is take a really watery brush and we're going to start splattering some colours. So this time what you want to do is hold your brush and you just want to tap the brush on top. Don't flick like this because it goes everywhere. This is way more controlled. If it starts to not flick that well, dip your brush in a bit more water. And it's fine if it goes over the flamingo, that's no problem. That's some pink. And I might do some yellow. So remember, the more water and the bigger the brush, the bigger the splatters. Might even do some blue. Just really watered down blue, so it's quite strong. Got bigger splatters, add more water to your brush. If you want some of them to join like these ones, just splatter just water and they'll start joining. A bit more pink in there. And that's your background done. So last thing to do, of course, is to sign it. Make sure you do it in a dry spot or write your name if you don't have a signature and put the year. Okay, so you're all done and dusted. Well done and I'll see you for next lesson.